Shalom, my people. So, today's topic is maintenance. Maintenance. The UFO engine is what I call my computer. Um, it's been sitting on my desk for, I don't know, four or five months now, and I have not cleaned any of the dust out of it. So, I can start, I'm starting to see dust on the actual side glass panel of the case. So I know that the computer is starting to get real dirty. So we're going to take it out, take it apart, blow it out with an air blower, not a compressor. You never want to use compressed air out of an air compressor. Even though it has a little air chip where you can blow air out of it, you don't want to use that on electronic components because there is moisture inside of those air lines and it can end up on your components and you will fry your stuff so no air compressors compressed air or dry air blower like a leaf blower that's what I'm going to use to blow it out with we're going to go out in the garage it's I don't know 941 at night and we're going to crank up a 22 volt leaf blower so let me take a look at the motor or the UFO engine my PC and we'll go from there Alright, so there's the UFO engine sitting in all of its glory. It is a Thermal Take N24, uh, I believe it's called a Hellraiser PC case. It's one of my favorite cases. Um, I love it to death. And the reason why I call this a UFO, oh, a UFO engine is because of all the different colors in it. Sorry, my, uh, my mirror and like just fell I don't know why see I have like these little check it out guys look at this look what I got I got this little deal right here see it has like Christmas lights and everything I don't know why it's not holding still right now I don't know I'll deal with that anyway but anyway let's go ahead and take the computer we got to turn it off and then we're going to pull it out put it on the desk and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about it, and then we gotta take it outside and blow it. Look, see it? See all them dang wires back there? I gotta disconnect all this crap to get the damn computer out. So let me do that real fast, cause that's time is money, and money is my time. You ain't got the money, honey. You ain't got the time. Or whatever that song goes. Let's see here. I got about 500 USB connectors plugged in. Now I would say the the biggest pain of the ass to plug back in uh, is the headphone jacks and stuff and all that kind of crap. That's that's like the most insane thing. Thing has to be dirty. It has to be. Let me. Uh, yeah. I can see it. I usually look at the the front ports here. Like, can y'all see that? Like, like that's all dust right there, built up from where the air gets intaked. And then, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's a dirty guys. It's dirty. I knew it was going to be. So, I'm going to take it outside, and we're going to hit it with a leaf blower, blow most of this crap out of it, and then I'll have to come back by and wipe it all down so yeah we'll go outside real quick well let's do it all right so we're in the garage and as you can see there's my ADCC kit and then there's its well that's going to be the next bike that I'm gonna work on but we got the UFO engine and we got the leaf blower so we're going to hook it up and we're going to spray it down <laughs> Alright, so I got the computer back in and I have the back side of it exposed. One of the things that I did was I mounted a 140 millimeter fan blowing cold air right to the back of the motherboard. And that right there keeps my temps down alone. And then I have a Thermaltake RGB 750 watt fully modular 80 plus gold power supply it cost me about hundred and ten dollars for that power supply but when it comes to computers that is the last 
thing that you go cheap on. You never go cheap on your power supply. Never. It is the life. It is the blood of your system. Take it apart. I'm going to take the computer apart because I want to replace the thermal, the thermal paste on here. I want to clean some of these uh, internal components. Uh, this is a GTX 1050 4 gig TI OC model and I do have it overclocked. After all, this is a tech channel, so I might as well do some tech-related stuff, right guys? Alright, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the GPU to allow me access. There go. I got the graphics card out. Uh, it looks pretty good. I don't really see any extreme build up or any kind of anything I mean it looks it looks clean you know almost brand new from the day I got it okay so I got it right here I still have it plugged in so I'm not going to fully remove it all I want to do is just kind of examine it and it looks pretty clean too what do y'all think it looks pretty clean I don't see really anything wrong with it stuff all the different controls and modes it has so anyway I'm just gonna kind of I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try to set this thing just kind of off to the side over here that way it's not because what I want is I want to get in here uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the RAM take them off all the way there we go all right let me reach in here get it so there we go now, this, what you want to do with these is you want to grab them and kind of give them a slight twist, like just a slight, like that, and when you do that, it'll come right off for you. Okay, so, there's the thermal paste that's on the bottom of the cooler, can y'all see it? There's the thermal paste, and then there's thermal paste right there on the CPU, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to... I'm gonna wipe that off, wipe this surface off, clean the clean the the cooler itself because as you can see it it has dust on it. So I'm gonna clean that, clean the fan, put new CPU thermal paste on it, and we'll be back in business. So give me one second. Okay. So if you're going to do this type of work, you're going to need a couple of things. The first thing you're going to need are these. These are called Arctic cleaners and then it comes in a one and a two step solution and then the second thing you're going to need is thermal paste good thermal paste so I'm going to go ahead and show you how we use this first thing we do is we take out the first bottle it says number one see it says thermal material remover so this is what we're going to use first we're just going to take a little bit of it and we're going to drop it right on top of the CPU hurry up and catch it before it falls and just kind of running it around until we can get all that CPU off of the uh, the CHS or the uh, the heat sink here and you want to make sure you get all of it because it's going to cake it's going to cake up around the corners on you so you see that so you want to want to make sure you get all of it off now, if this was a repair and this was somebody's system, I'd probably charge them anywhere from 50 to 60 bucks to do just this, just a, a thermal application. That's all. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything else unless they asked me to do something else. So I'm just going to try to run my rag around that corner. Now the good thing about using gigabyte boards is that they're highly ESD compatible, meaning that they can they can take a lot of abuse and you, they would be all right. Hold on. All right, so yeah, we got it nice and clean. All right, got that nice and clean, and then I'm gonna do the same thing to this. I'm gonna apply a couple drops of it on there. Take my rag. We're going to get it 
nice and cleaned up. See that? That's what you want. Want that nice shine coming back to it. So we're just going to remove that thermal paste. Alright. Okay, there's that. Now what we need after we've done that is we need the second bottle which is number two. This is called the purifier. So you're just going to take a little bit of that, put it right back onto that spot that we were just cleaning with. You only need maybe a drop or two of it. And then you just take your rag and you just wipe it around like that. Okay? And you get that. You get a nice, clean, good looking finish. Alright, so I'm just going to give it a good wipe and I'm going to set it down over here because we CPU cooler. Now the best way to clean a CPU cooler is with a toothbrush. Alright, so let me go get a toothbrush real quick because I have multiple brushes. So we're going to take our brush, we're going to take our brush and we're going to take some rubbing alcohol and we're going to put it on the brush and then we're going to clean the CPU heat sink with it. So let's just run the brush down inside, swish it all around, loving bubbles baby, loving bubbles, alright. Alright, so, and then we just kind of want to take the heat sink and just run, run it in one direction, guys. You, you want to go in one direction because you want all that dust to go one direction. Just like that band with all the little funny guys in it, all the midgets, uh, one direction, whatever. So, yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. So, anyway. Can y'all see it? How does it look already? Just from that. Look at that. Just from one one pass on it. What I do with it. Alright. You can either apply it directly to this or you can apply it to the CHS or to the top of the uh, I don't know why I keep saying that. You can apply it you can apply it to the top of the CPU. Whichever you want to do. I usually uh, apply it to the CPU and then put this down on it and kind of move it around. Uh, you can do the P method, which it only needs just like a drop of it. Like I've seen people go crazy with this stuff, and you really shouldn't. So you just want to take a little bit of it and just kind of squeeze it out like that. There you go. That's almost too much, but I think that will do. All right. Remember, guys, it's called thermal paste, not thermal crust. All right. So I'm going to take it, and I'm going to put it back down. Put it right on top, and then I'm just going to kind of give it a little, you know, swirl, like a happy dance swirl, just to try to get it everywhere that I can. Alright. I think that'll do it. Now, there are little slots down here on this. CPU heat sink where this little bar that I'm tightening down needs to fit in. It's like a little groove. So you want to make sure that you get it into that groove. Alright, and then I'm going to tighten it down. I'm looking forward to make sure that this heat sink is right over it. You see how this is a four pipe heat sink. That's what it's called because it has four pipes, four chamber heat pipes. I want to align all four pipes up with the CPU so I see the CPU sitting down there like that and I want to take all four lines of the CPU and try to line them up with it like that so that's what I'm looking for when I'm looking for it underneath here so I think I got it right where I want it it looks straight and you want to tighten it down evenly you don't want to tighten down this side all the way and then tighten down the other side all the way that's that will not work you can use so I got that done uh, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the fan the way that I had it 
So it goes, I think, like that. All right. And then with DDR4 Platinum, or I'm sorry, with DDR4 Platforms, you want to align the notch with the notch in the in the RAM. So make sure your little feet are open. Here, let's move that sensor wire out of the way. All right, so you just want to slide them down in there. They only go in one way, guys, so don't be afraid about putting them back in there. Uh, if I can get it right. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand. Anyway, you just want to get them in there and push them down until they click and it will click but if if the RAM's not seated all the way when you turn the computer on you're gonna get an error it's gonna beep or you're gonna get some kind of bias error or something telling you that the RAM is not seated properly and then you know that your RAM isn't seated properly so I'm not gonna go through all that so I just wanna make sure that it's it's in there alright let's grab the second stick get the second stick there we go. There's that satisfying click I was looking for. They pay good money for people to build to build computer systems for them, you know. And I offer that service of building a computer for you. Uh, but you know, I only make maybe a hundred dollars or so off of actually building the computer. Every once in a while, I get some guy that wants me to build them a a water cooled PC, and they they send me a a computer list on PC Part Picker, which is a great, that is a great website. PC Part Picker, oh yeah, man. It you, what you do is is you can build a computer on PC Part Picker. Like you build, like you you look through a list and you say, okay, I'm gonna take this motherboard and this CPU and this RAM, even though you know nothing about it, and you put it in the in your list and the software will tell you whether or not if those parts are compatible with each other so it takes all the guessing work out of it which is really really handy because it allows me to build a system completely virtual online and it's going to tell me whether or not if the dang things even going to work if it's even compatible with each other usually I tell people to keep AMD with AMD and keep Intel with Intel I think I can pick it back up now and set it on its head. So I'm going to wipe this area out in here because we don't want any we don't want any dust on anything, you know. If we can eliminate it, let's eliminate it. So I'm going to wipe down there and get all my RGBs clean. Wipe down in there. All right. So I got the case in the upright position like that. Alright, let's get this sucker reinstalled. Right, I think it goes... I think it goes this way. This right here was uh, about 40 bucks, I believe. It was like 40 bucks on Amazon, something like that. Now, if I remember correctly, this is supposed to go up in there, but if I remember right, it didn't it didn't want to like I was it was because of all of them switches and stuff I got down there and if I put it up here there was there's not enough airflow to be created so I had no choice but to kind of mount it in this position right and then use a piece of hard foam okay and then that hard foam is going to slide up in here at the face of it like that which it kind of impedes the airflow that goes through there so I think I might actually put that in the back this time okay so let me get this situated alright so I got it right there okay let's get our screws out let's screw something eh, oh shit just dropped it alright hold on let's screw something again I like screwing uh, no pun intended, just, uh, you know, saying it like that, you know what I mean? You know, I try to be funny, you know, why the little boy throw the clock out the window? To see time fly, 
you know, that put the graphics card back in. One thing you never want to do is you never want to touch the feet right here. These little connectors, you don't ever want to touch that. You I think I can pick it back up now and set it on its head. So I'm going to wipe this area out in here because we don't want any we don't want any dust on anything, you know. If we can eliminate it, let's eliminate it. Let's get this sucker reinstalled. All right, I think it goes. I think it goes this way. This right here was uh, about forty bucks, I believe. It was like forty bucks on Amazon, something like that. Now, if I remember correctly. This is supposed to go up in there, but if I remember right, it didn't. It didn't want to. Like I was, it was because of all the switches and stuff I got down there. And if I put it up here, there was there's not enough airflow to be created. So I had no choice but to kind of mount it in this position, right? And then use a piece of hard foam. Okay and then that hard foam is going to slide up in here at the face of it like that which it kind of impedes the airflow that goes through there so I think I might actually put that in the back this time okay so let me get this situated alright so I got it right there okay let's get our screws out let's screw something again I like screwing uh, no pun intended just uh, you know saying it one more thing that you do need to check most high-end cases will have this little dust cover that is underneath the power supply make sure you guys check that and clean that too you definitely don't want to forget the little screen catcher that is underneath the power supply so guys I got it back in and we're good to go we didn't get no error codes as you can see both of the displays are coming up the machines running and everything is a-okay and it actually sounds a little bit better it's not as loud as it was and immediately I've already noticed that I am running a colder temperature so there it is guys what do y'all think pretty cool good deal make sure y'all give me a like subscribe if you ain't and check out the giveaway that's pretty cool and make sure you guys look at the check scam video that is very important and I appreciate y'all peace